Hello and welcome in lesson 14. This is our last lesson in learning how to read the Arabic alphabet. Uh, we've completed now uh, all the letters and we still have one small sign to study, which is called Wasla. It's like, it looks like a small sod and it's put above the Aleph. So, um, I told you that in Arabic, the words would either, would never begin with a vowel, so we have words like bab, that we've seen before. Uh, last lesson we had words like insan, so now we know that it looks like it begins with a vowel, because insan, but actually it's not a vowel, okay, it's a consonant, insan. So, there is a whole category of words, like many of them, that begin with a vowel of liaison. Uh, and this vowel disappears uh, as soon as there is a word before it. So, uh, we do have words like, uh, for example, uh, itchless, or uh, something like uh, isma. So here, in this case, you have this sign here, because uh, it's the alif which is used to show this uh, vowel of liaison at the beginning of the word. Uh, and we have also the definite article, al, which is also uh, uses this uh, vowel of liaison at the beginning. So it's, uh, it's like very common, but it is important to remember that it disappears altogether uh, as soon as you have a word before it. So this is how Arabic words begin, either with a consonant, consonant like this, or consonant like the Hamza, or with a vowel of liaison, including the definite article. Uh, just like in anything in Arabic, we have three uh, possible vowels uh, of liaison. The most common one is I. Okay, like itchless, uh, like ifham. Uh, so it, this is or ism. This is the itchless ifham ism. So this is the most common by very far. Uh, to add an initial e at the beginning of the word uh, to find this vowel of liaison as an e at the beginning of the word. It is part of the word, I mean, it's just the word is like this, ifham, ichlis, ism. Then we have, in some cases, but not so many, uh, we have an u as a vowel of liaison, u, like utrul. This is true of some imperative uh, of verbs. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, passive form like ustuchdima, so it, it's the u, but u is far less common than i. And then we have only three words that have the a as the vowel of liaison, the definite article, al. Very often you would hear it as an l, e, rather than a, but it's a fatha, al. The second word with uh, the, al, the fatha as the vowel, the liaison is Allah. The last one is Allahumma. Uh, Allahumma, let me vocalize it completely, and it's also with a fatha as a vowel of liaison. Once again, whatever this vowel is, as part of the word, whatever it is, it is not pronounced as soon as there is a word before, uh, before it. So, how does it work? Like, for example, I would write... I would add the wa before ichlis. So what happens is that the, the, the kasra of liaison disappears, and this is replaced by a wasla. Uh, in modern Arabic, the wasla is everywhere, but people don't write it. It's not even possible to type it on your keyboard. I have to. I I had to modify my keyboard to be able to type it. It's in the Quran, you see it everywhere. Uh, it is very common, I mean, it exists in every word as soon as it is after 
uh, another word and then it's replaced by a wasla, but it's not written. So you'd find something like this in texts, in modern texts. Watch this. But for the sake of clarity, I write it. And also for the sake of clarity, I can put it in gray so that uh, you realize it's not pronounced at all. So all together with its kasra, it disappeared. So we have now, we pronounce Wetschlis, we write it, but we don't pronounce it. Wetschlis. Um, same, for example, if you say, uh, so we have, Oktob, write, I add the fa in front of it, and I don't say fa Oktob, I say faktub. Faktub, and this is transformed into a wasla. Faktub. So, uh, it has disappeared. It also works between words, like if I say, for example, I have ma'a, and I have al-kitab, something like this, ma'a al-kitab, because here there is a vowel, so this one will disappear, and this one will turn to a wasla. So, what I say, what pronunciation is ma'al kitab, ma'al kitab, right away, ma'al kitab. Uh, it works with uh, any kind of vowel, like for example, if I have, <coughs> let's say I would type this, haithu el kitab, because of the vowel here, this one disappears, it turns to a wasla, and I pronounce haithul Haithul Kitab. Haithul Kitab. Okay, so this is how it works. Uh, as soon as there is any word before it, it disappears. It is not pronounced. The alif remains. The alif remains, but it's useless. It's just not pronounced. Um, I did not know where actually to uh, do some reading exercises about the definite article, so I've added them to this lesson. Um, we will, uh, so as I said, uh, the, the definite article is al, alif lam, al. Here there is a voyelle de liaison, a uh, vowel of liaison which is the fatha, al, uh, and then it can be added in front of any word. Hello, we have in Arabic, two types of consonants. We have the lunar consonant and we have the solar consonant. So it's nothing to do with the yin and the yang. It's just because some uh, behave like qamar, the moon. So these are the lunar um, consonants. And some behave like shams, the sun. Uh, and here I've put in yellow the solar consonant and in blue the lunar consonant. So what does it mean? Here, if I write Qamar, and I put the definite article before it, I read Al-Qamar, Al-Qamar. Of course, you know already that if I put something before, this will disappear, so I will have Ma'al-Qamar. So in this case, the vowel of liaison Fatha has disappeared, and I, I have ma'al qamar. Now if I do the same with the word shams. So I have like this, shams. And if I put the, if I put the definite article before shams, actually uh, the lam disappears and it's replaced by a shaddam. So in this case, the lam disappeared. And I say ash-shams, ash-shams. What gets pronounced is actually this. Ashams. Ashams. Okay, this is the actual pronunciation. The lam completely disappears. There is an assimilation for these consonants. The ta, the tha, dal, zal, ra, zin, sin, shin, sa. For those yellow consonants, the solar consonant, there is an assimilation. This is for. Uh, phonetic reasons and point of articulation in the mouth anyway. Um, so here, this is what gets pronounced, it's ashams. And, even more, if I do this, and I put something before, <coughs> so 
So here we know already that the lamb has disappeared, but actually because of the here the vowel before, the fatha, the vowel of liaison disappears, and this becomes a wasla, it also disappears. So here what is pronounced is this Ma'ashams, Ma'ashams. And the only thing remaining of the definite article is the Shaddam. Ma'ashams. So you have Ma'al Qamar, Ma'ashams. Okay, so um, here this is the way the blue consonant behaves, the lunar consonant. The lamb remains as it is, it's not assimilated. And the yellow consonant, the, the solar consonant, the lamb is assimilated, ma'ashams. Since the vowel is also assimilated here, both of them are assimilated and disappear. Um, so, um, I will now go through uh, exercises it, uh, and then I will command them. Allah, Allah. Wallahi Billahi Ijlis Uktub Staikiz Unzuri Wajlis Saktub Wastaikiz Summanzuri Ismuki Masmuki Ibni Ma'abni Al-Qamaru Al-Kitabu Al-Waladu Al-Alamu Ala Al-Kitabi Fil-Kitabi حيث الكتاب بالعالم المرأة مع المرأة بالمرأة في العالم الشمس والشمس حيث الشمس بالشمس الصديق مع الصديق حيث الطفل أم الطفل الثلاثاء يوم الثلاثاء النبي بيت النبي. So you see, I mean, actually, you don't have to panic and to remember all these things by heart because it it becomes pretty intuitive uh, what the solar lunar uh, letters are and what the lunar are. So it becomes quite intuitive very quickly. So it should not be uh, it should not be a problem. I'm going to go through those examples with you uh, to comment on them. So we have Allah, so here because there is nothing before, the vowel of liaison is maintained and it's a fatha. Allah, but here, because it is preceded by this vowel, haithu, hu, then uh, the vowel of liaison disappears and it is replaced by wasla. So it goes haithullahu, same here, wallahi. Same here, billahi. You remember I told you before that um, if the name Allah is preceded by a kasra, then the lam is not emphatic. So you hear the difference here. Wallahi, billahi. So here in this line, the vowel is maintained because it is at the beginning. And actually it's pronounced like a hamza. Ichlis, uktub, staiqiz, unzuri. But the second line, you would find it's preceded by something else, a particle or another word. So then, 
the vowel of liaison disappears and it's turned into a wasla. Wajlis faktub wastaiqid thumma nduri. Here again, so here it's maintained, here it disappeared. Here it's maintained, here it disappeared. Okay. Uh, the, la the next three lines are about the lunar consonant. Al-qamar, al-kitab. So the lam is maintained. Al-qamar, al-kitab, al-walad, al-alam. Here the lam is maintained, but the vowel of liaison disappears. Ala al-kitab, fil kitab, haythul kitab, bil alam. Same here. Al mar'a, ma'al mar'a, etc. Here on the last three lines we have the solar consonants, shin, uh, the sod, the ta, the sa, the nun. So these are solar consonants. So here the vowel of liaison is maintained because it's the beginning of the word, but the lam disappears because it's a solar consonant. So it goes Ashams, Ashams. And here, both the vowel of liaison and the lam disappears because it's preceded by something, so it goes Washams, Washams, Ashams, Washams, Haisu Shams, Bishams. Exactly the same thing for Sadiq, As Sadiq, Ma'as Sadiq, etc. etc. So, um, again, don't panic the, about the solar and the lunar. It should become intuitive very quickly. Um, I think it's important that you understand exactly how do this vowel of liaison work. It's everywhere. I mean, it's extremely common in, at the beginning of many, many words in Arabic. But as soon as it, as it is preceded by anything else, it is not pronounced. This is the most... Uh, and it includes the definite article... So I think um, this was it's an, uh, important. This was our last lesson. Um, I will still uh, publish a video with exercises for lesson 14, and then you will have to begin to learn Arabic. Bye bye.